Welcome back to another high-level match of StarCraft 2. What I've got for you today is a Zerk versus Protoss, a best of five series, where in game number one, we find ourselves on the map Babylon. Now, spotting here in the top left-hand corner, playing with the red Zerk drones from South Korea, we have Dark. His opponent in the opposite corner from the United States of America, we're looking at Astrea's main Nexus. I've been casting both Estrella and Dark quite a bit lately, and that's because they're both really good at the game, and they're still participating in online tournaments. A lot of players right now, in case you're unfamiliar, they are not sharing any of their games, because IEM Katowice is coming up very, very soon. By the time you're watching this video, I think like next week, so that's the StarCraft II World Championships, and obviously a lot of players do not necessarily want to be giving their opponents any additional information than they absolutely need to share. Dark, of course, I mean, he doesn't really care. Dark is certainly one of the favorites anytime he, well, participates in any tournament. He's obviously won the World Championships at some point as well, and he's always been playing like this. I guess in his mind, he's like, well, if you guys aren't playing, you know what? I will play. I will get a little bit of money here and there. I mean, it's a couple hundred dollars in, a, well, a few tournaments every day. I, I don't really mind. Anyways, he certainly is one of the favorites going into that uh, premier tournament very soon, but... Yeah, it is kind of funny to see that uh, some players are very diligent about not sharing any information at all, and then other players just don't really seem to care. Australia also, of course, qualified. I do think he... Ooh. Well, I do think he messed up this wall over here. What is going on with this abomination? I guess there is... Uh, these maps are, of course, very new. Yeah. You know what? There is something to be said as well for playing tournaments, just to see how you perform under stress, right? Because there is a chance that Australia is going to be facing off against Dark at, well, IEM Katowice. And obviously, uh, yeah, getting some practicing on these maps is, well, very, very helpful. Anyways, that being said, I'm very excited for the event. As a matter of fact, ooh, a Void Ray opener here from Australia. Uh, they just announced this as of me recording this yesterday. I obviously was already aware of this for some time, but I got invited to cast the World Championships for the very first time which I am very excited for. I mean, I've been casting StarCraft 2 for a long time. And uh, yeah, for the longest time, I did not really get asked to do any of the premier tournaments, but lately, over the last year or so, I've been getting more and more opportunities. And yeah, I've been wanting to cast the World Championship for a very long time. And the fact that I now finally get that chance is pretty exciting. Anyhow, that is why I'm also preparing some videos in advance. I've been mentioning that already <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. I wasn't entirely sure as you know, if I could mention as to why that was. But anyways, Oracle going into the main base. It's settling right now for a little stasis ward. That did change the attack priority of these things as well. So, say for example, Dark decided to attack move in that direction with the Queens. The Queens would not necessarily be hunting down the Oracle, but they might actually snipe from just an attack move alone. Okay, this is actually quite good now for Astraea. But they might accidentally snipe the stasis ward there instead. Dark though decided to deal with it by just sending in a single drone. And that one is going to wake up momentarily. There it is. You can now actually issue a command as well while the unit is, is in stasis a little bit more reliably, which is also kind of cool. Anyway, so it's a an interesting start right here. An Oracle into a Void Ray. It's one of those things that we don't normally see. And maybe that's the reason why Astraea is bringing it out, right? So Astraea is obviously well aware of the fact that, well, Dark plays against someone like Hero 17 times every week. And Hero, I don't think we'll catch Hero going for a Void Ray after an Oracle at this point in the StarCraft 2 meta. So maybe this is going to throw Dark off ever so slightly. Well, if that is the case, though, Dark uh, is not showing any of it because he's just making a whole lot of queens right now. You know what? Actually, I don't think he's thrown off at all. <laughs> he's making queens. He's making Zerkings. He's got plus one melee started up. But it's certainly not going to finish before this attack takes place. I think as soon as Dark saw a Void Ray, he's like, okay, that's it. I'm making Queens. I'm making Zorklings. I'm going to attack you, and you'll have to deal with all of this. So at this point, Australia does see a lot of Zorklings running towards the other side, and now he has spotted the Queens as well. A couple of sentries getting warped in. One in the main base. Well, the natural, I guess. And then one over at the third as well. One of the problems you run into right here, right, as a Protoss player, is that you need to split up your units. Good force field right over there, but that pylon in the wall off is not going to help him out all too much either. That force field is pretty decent. Battery overcharge forced over there. Immediately dark turned around. No more energy on the uh, sentry over here in the natural. And this is a disaster. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this is why we don't normally see Void Rays in the current meta. A couple of Adepts over here being annoying as well. Actually getting a good amount of worker kills. Well, so far actually. You know what? 
He got eight workers there in total. Was that just the two adepts? I guess so. Maybe these follow-up Zerklings can get a bit more work done. Yeah. So, so far, honestly, the crisis management here from Astraea has been amazing. He's lost only four probes. It's just that he isn't done dealing with this just yet, and there's a lot more Banelings just about to finish up. The Queens are still just, well, hitting whatever they can. The very least tanking for these Zerklings. If we can settle right here with only, like, well, nine worker losses, that would be amazing. Okay, let's see how good that control is going to be. So far, it is really, really good, but now... Okay, quite a few more of these units do end up falling. Hmm, the Adept counterattack was actually really nice. Yeah, eventually... Ah, they cut the Nexus as well. Eventually, I do think this is all gonna get cleaned up. But I think now this attack is justified. Plus one is also finished up already. Now the third base is in a lot of trouble as well. It looked good right there for the American hero for just a second. But sadly, I don't think it's going to be enough. One of the issues you're running into right now as well as Astraea, right? Is that, yeah, sure, you've got Stalkers right now and they have Blink and all that, which is great. It's just that your opponent already has Zerklings with plus one melee. And, well, they naturally do counter those Stalkers as well, so... I'm not exactly sure what you're going to do right now. So he does have the charge coming up. So he could go for an attack with, I guess, Stalkers and a bunch of Zealots. But as long as Dark cleans up this army over here, he's going to be okay. Stasis Ward gets the Knight as well. Plus one melee Zerklings are running in right now too. Any kill they get at this point is fantastic. That Void Ray up in the air still helping out. But yeah, this is too much. It's not like Dark's economy is great either, though. He's only at 40 drones. It's just that with a unit composition like this, yeah, the traits are not perfect, but they're more efficient than when a couple of other ones. If this would have been a Roach follow-up, I think Australia would have, at the very least, felt the opportunity to potentially micro his way out of this. Well, he's going to try. Not making any more probes, though. And whenever Protoss is not making probes, you know that things are starting to get really desperate. So normally, right, we don't see a Void Ray as a follow-up. Normally, we'd see two to three Oracles. And if you have two to three Oracles out, you can actually start sniping those Queens relatively easily. Whereas with one Void Ray, uh, you don't really have that option. So that one Void Ray, even though it's nice, it's pretty good at defending things, it's also a little bit of a dangerous, well, a dangerous option, because you can accidentally shoot yourself in the foot. Circlings, once again, by the way, managed to get into the main base. I mean, <laughs> there is no wall off. One Zealot and a battery overcharge apparently is all that's gonna save this. Let's see though if there's maybe enough damage output in this army that Astraea still has on the ground. I mean, the Zerg forces are rather slim. That's because the majority of those Zerglings are now on the other side of the map. Well, wreaking havoc on the third Nexus. All that Dark needs to do is clean up this army. And I don't think that that is really going to be much of an issue. I think this is mostly Astraea processing the loss. He's got like six Stalkers of Void Ray and a Dream, but I don't think that that is going to be enough to shut this down. The hero of Void Ray is going to go up in a puff of blue smoke as well, and I think that is going to be it right here for Astraea. Game number two. We find ourselves on Ancient Cistern. I was going to fast forward through the first minute or so of this game, but it turns out Dark is already sending a... A drone to watch the other side of the map, and this could actually get very awkward, because Astraea is planning to go Nexus first. Yeah, Dark is looking for this right now as well. He's like, wait a second. Oh god, this could get, well, really good actually. What? W Astraea, you had that. So, wait, 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 wait. So, I think Astraea purposefully did not block that natural. Even though he could have. I think he just did not want to delay any of his gateways any more than he absolutely needed to. Very frequently with an early game proxy hatch, we'll see Zerg players going for a spawning pool first. But this is just, I mean, from the timing alone, he should have known that that was not a pool first. And if you don't have to worry about any Zerglings coming in, you could probably send a second probe towards the low ground while blocking your own... That's... I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced here. Anyways, instead, you know, if you're blocking my natural... He's going to be blocking uh, his opponent's natural as well. Spawning pool, well, only about a third of the way done. Drones are going to start mining creep right now, but... Yeah, now you have to think on your feet. So, apparently, what that means right here for Australia is going double gateway into a cyber core. Fair enough. 
Pylon over here. Yeah, it got cancelled momentarily. Dark right now. He doesn't really want to go for the third base. He really wants to be connecting his bases with creep because he knows that there's likely, with the double gateway, right? There's likely going to be like, I don't know, two stalkers. At, at, at the very least, like two zealots and two adepts heading across the map. So if you're then, well, disconnected by creep, it can be quite difficult to actually hold on to that outer base. So I do really like what Estrella is doing right here with that uh, patrolling probe. Um, okay, second and third pylon inside of the main base. A couple of zerklings go in as well. We're gonna go for a third zealot. And now two adepts, okay. So this is essentially forcing Estrella into a one base opener and Dark knows exactly what to do against that as he's also forced into a one base play himself. He's now gonna go for a Roach Warren while mining double gas. Dark is such a bully, man. Look at this. Oh, look at Brenda. Brenda protecting the creep tumor with her life. With that creep tumor down, that natural is not gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah, because now even if the hatchery dies, which I think it will eventually, you're gonna need some form of detection to get rid of that creep tumor. So obviously you can go for an Oracle out of the Stargate, but... If you're playing against someone who's making roaches, this is a situation where you probably do want Void Race. I love watching Dark, you know, play games with StarCraft 2. He is such a jerk. Whenever he thinks he's better than you, he will play the most abusive style he can come up with. Anyways, at least one of the creep tumors got sniped, but this one is certainly in range of a nexus that would be planted down. And now roaches are popping their ugly head out of those cocoons as well. Another queen is just about to spawn. There we go. Well, for a second, the queen was going to hold the door there, which would have been hilarious. He does have one drone over here, probably originally intending on making a spine crawler or something along those lines. Anyways, indeed, a Void Ray is coming up right now for Estrella. That does mean that he needs some sort of anti-air. There's another drone coming up. There's a, a third queen now also coming up too. Good targeting there from the American Protoss. It's a Spore Crawler. I like the idea of a Spore Crawler a lot. I'm assuming Dark, yeah, he has seen the, uh, the Stargate. So a spine crawler may feel more sensical at this point in the game, but he indeed does decide to go for the spore instead. Two queens and a spore, pretty dang good. If he can shut down this pylon, I believe that's pretty much it right here for Estrella. No micro on that stalker. So yeah, I think I think what Estrella is doing, okay, he's just giving up the low ground entirely. He's producing whatever he can out of those warp gates, but he's not going to go for the, uh, the research right there on the cyber core. Instead, what he's going to do is just hold on to the main base. And I guess try to eventually clean up his own natural expansion by, well, making shield batteries and all that. So this shield battery, it's nice, I guess, right? Ugh. Prismatic alignment, dealing quite a lot of damage. And I don't think this was necessarily the best early game start here for Dark. But somehow, some way, he's wiggled his way out of this again. This is something he keeps doing over and over and over again. I've tried these builds myself. It never works, man. Obviously, I'm not nearly as good, but, like, transfuse? I think we do have energy. He probably wants to save the transfusions. Yeah. Probably wants to save the transfusions. Now he wants to go for a robo-facility that produces immortals, but there's not enough pylons available to power all of this. Queen's right now so brave, they don't even need to spore anymore. So they managed to shoot their spines until that Void Ray has only one health remaining. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> oh, 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 dark, dark, dark. This is like a, a disrespectful... It's already kind of a disrespectful build in the first place. Right? Going for a proxy hatch, it is already a little bit rude. But this version of it in particular... Just a hatch first in your opponent's natural? Such a mean thing to do. Oh, well, that's it. That is certainly it. GG. All right, here we go again. Game three, we find ourselves on Royal Blood. Dark once again starts off this game by sending a drone to watch the other side of the map. Okay, this time around he sees that it's not a Nexus first, and instead that it's a gateway as part of the wall off. Okay, so now he decides to change it up a little bit. He decides to go for his own natural expansion first, and I believe he's probably going to be going for his opponent's natural expansion here very shortly. Yeah, Dark once again bullying his opponents. He's very good at it, too. I feel like he rarely ever does this against people that he thinks are about as good as him. But if he thinks he's better than you, he will whip these builds out all of the time. And it must be incredibly annoying to play against. So, 
you gotta you gotta figure out as protos. You can't treat every proxy hatchery like you know every other proxy hatchery. You need to figure out what version of the proxy hatchery this is. Especially after that previous game we just saw. Yeah, Dark obviously has shown us that he can be very aggressive with this build. I've seen this particular version of this build many times before, but Astrea might already be a little bit flustered. Okay, he's going double Zealot. Most Protoss players opt to go for a Zealot and then like four or five probes to kill that hatchery that's building on the low ground. Dark will probably end up canceling that hatchery at the last possible second and then potentially, well, if you could have steal a gas in the main base or something along those lines. It is once more going to be a Stargate follow-up right here from Estrella. What this does achieve, though, is that it throws Protoss off of their strategy entirely, right? So if you're the average ladder Protoss, right? If you're the average ladder hero who likes to play macro games, if you have someone building a proxy hatch inside of your base, there you go. I can imagine that your build order is not going to be as crisp anymore as it once upon a time was. Oh, got to be careful here. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got to replant that if you're not. Okay, I can imagine that you probably are going to mess up your build order at least a little bit, right? And that is where Dark strikes. Dark knows very well, okay, if you hit a supply block right now, I am going to walk all over you over the course of the next couple minutes. Why well, I say that, he's got quite a bit of money in the bank right now himself. I think the reason why we don't see this build very frequently from guys like, for example, Serral, who is considered to be, well, at least, you know, maybe over the last couple months he hasn't looked as as dominant. Not quite as dominant, anyways. But yeah, we don't really see builds from Serral like this. It's because if Protoss reacts to it perfectly, they're actually in a really good position. And I think so far, Astrea is in an excellent spot. Link speed is going to be only about, well, 60% of the way done. Quite a few Zorklings already produced here as well by Dark, who yeah, is going to be able to finally sneak out a third hatchery there. But income-wise, this is really not that great for him. Drone in the main base now eventually got destroyed. At the very least, a little bit of frustration right there from Astrea, I think, because he really didn't need to activate the Pulsar Beam. But I guess he doesn't want to get any follow-up scouts here. And once more, you know what? It's the Void Ray. We saw what Dark did. Last time around, he saw a Void Ray, and he's already seen it. I think if you're Astrea, you're better off avoiding them. <laughs> Loco, you're so funny. I'm going to hit the like button. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Anyways, um, two Oracles, or sorry, two drones ended up going down right here to that Oracle. Not bad at all. The Avoid Ray. Okay. It is going to shut down that Overlord. Are we going to go for an Evo Chamber here? Oh, well, what we are going to do is send the Zorklings in. Ooh. Okay. Zealot goes down. Nothing all too crazy. Yeah, the dynamic in this game is now entirely different, though. So maybe going for a Queen push is not as easily done. We have four Overlords building right here for Dark. I think that's a mistake, but, like, maybe it's not. No. I, I do think it was actually a mistake. Yeah, he's just preparing for additional overlord, uh, overlord losses right now. So, at this point, this game is going really well right here for Astrea. Just needs to be careful. Oh my god! Well, just as I said it, you don't really want to be losing Adepts here for free. Now, keep in mind, this is Korea going up against North America. So, they're probably playing on a server that, well, gives them both a bad ping. So those very small, minute moves may be due to the fact that they're both playing with probably like 150 ping or so. Anyways, Roachworn is coming up. Third Nexus finally comes up as well. And Estrella, okay, he is ready to get a little bit of aggression on. He decides to go for the charge upgrade to get her with the plus one ground weapons. Roachworn is going to be good against that, but yeah, if he can get a couple more drones here. Okay, that was port. Whoa, four drones with half HP? Five drones with half HP. Oh, you hate to see it, man. You do really hate to see it. That is not what you want here as Protoss at all. Yeah, I think Dark is in Astrea's head. Well, here come the Queens again. Proxy Hatchery into Queen March. Dark is ready to rub salt in the wound. The only problem is that this time around he doesn't have that great of an economy. And Protoss does not have to bother defending that third Nexus. As a matter of fact, I think he just cancel it. Just cancel the third Nexus or... Yeah, you cancel it and just defend this location of the map alone. 
There are roaches this time around. They're certainly going to morph into ravagers. With the new patch, that takes them about four seconds longer. Not significant, but might be enough to get an immortal out. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> One. Okay, maybe multiples is not a terrible idea. The queens are going back home. Yeah, I think he's looked at this and he's like, you know what? With the Void Ray gone, well, at the very least, push back. Life's not too... What is going on? Why are we out here? Why did the sentry just step outside of that wall? Hmm. Okay, so I think Dark kind of relies on the fact that the opponent has to hold on to both the third and the natural. So maybe he showed up a bit early. Or maybe... Did he scout the Dark Shrine before this push? That could be. I'm actually going to go back. Sorry. I'm going to go back here. I want to see... If he knew about the Dark Shrine. So the Dark Shrine is coming up. He decides to send the Queen back here. No, he decides to go for a lair and he decides to go for drones here. Before he sees the Dark Shrine. So maybe this is just uh, Dark Star Sense is tingling here. There is a very good chance that the only reason why someone would go for two Void... Or sorry, one Void Raid, two Oracles and then a delayed third Nexus. Is if they would be going for a Dark Shrine. Now, obviously, these games become kind of wild to predict here for Zerk, because you need to know the timings after a proxy hatchery. In a standard game, knowing those timings is one thing, but after a proxy hatch, everything becomes rather complex. I think a lot of people don't really give Dark enough credit. Like, he's known as a bit of a madman, right, and a bit of a crazy guy. And he definitely doesn't play the tightest builds, but his knowledge is actually, well, certainly there, right? So there's a very good chance that by seeing the timing right there of the third Nexus, he knew that it could only really be Dark Templar. Anyways, it turns out to be the right move because, well, the DTs are now available and they're going to start trying to get some damage done. The problem is the Zerg army has already retreated. Dark right now is a pretty good economy. Maybe these two DTs can get something done. One of them gets surrounded. Okay, well, at the very least it managed to sneak away. Maybe they can kill a third or, sorry, a fourth. Okay, all right. Has he seen the Spire? Because seeing that Spire would be very helpful. He did not see the Spire. So whereas Dark Star Senses are tingling here, Astrea is thinking. Thinking is a very dangerous thing to do while you're playing StarCraft 2, okay? You want to be on autopilot 99% of the time. <laughs> we do the thinking when we're watching replays, when we're, you know, paying attention uh, after the game, but not during the game. At the very least, one thing he's not thinking of at this point is Mutalisks. I think that's what we're going to be seeing here out of Dark momentarily. Probably just one group of Mutas and then go, well, straight back to down. Yeah, one, one group of Mutas and then, on, uh, then go straight back down to Roaches, Ravagers, and Zerklings. Or not. You know what? No, that's not what he's doing. He is going to go for eight Mutas and plus one Flyer. So the plus one Flyer upgrade is amazing. It's just also the cost of a Mutalisk. So usually you would only ever make this upgrade if you're also planning on doubling down with Mutas. And I guess since he's now also taken a fifth hatch, that is the plan. In the meantime, Estrella is going for Disruptors, which is one of the absolute last units you need against uh, a Muta player. It's probably going to be Mutas and Zerklings, right? So yeah, anyways, there go the Mutalisks. Observer not in the right place, although it, dot, it did catch the tail end of it. And he didn't notice it. Okay, so a Phoenix immediately starts up. But that is a little bit later than you ideally want it. Okay. He does have Blink, so that's important. Yeah. Those shield batteries from earlier in the natural still quite helpful. Now you gotta play the game though, whether or not it's gonna be one group of Mutas or whether it's, whether it's gonna be Mass Muta, right? So this is super difficult for Protoss to predict. You really want to get a scout off on that Spire and see whether or not it's researching something or maybe see additional Mutas coming in. In this case, it is additional Mutalisks. And yeah, we see Estrella sort of dealing with it as if it's additional Mutas, but he's going for one Phoenix at a time while producing double Disruptors. Whereas I think you really want to be producing multiple Phoenixes at once. And then maybe one Disruptor at a time, maybe a couple Archons. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Because at this point, yeah, technically speaking, you could counter 50 Mutas with two Phoenixes, but realistically, very difficult to pull off. We're soon going to be arriving at the point as well where Mutas can actually start taking on these Stalkers in a straight-up battle. 
Because obviously mutas, they clump up together. Stalkers, they take up a lot of space. And at some point, you just don't have enough stalkers engaging all at the same time. Whereas the mutas are always firing all at the same time. Okay, I think he successfully figured it out right now, though. So plus one flyer starts up. Zealot not in the right position there in the wall off. Void Ray goes down for free. This is not really the point to attack Dark. I don't think he want to be attacking at this point. He's thinking about it. That Protoss army is looking mighty terrifying. Second Stargate is coming. We're already up to 30 mutas now. That's a lot of mutalisks. He's gonna try and engage this. Really? Okay. No, he decides to disengage. I was gonna say, I don't think that's a great choice. One Phoenix, very far forward. Now the Fleet Beacon comes up as well. So there's an upgrade in the Fleet Beacon called the Anion Pulse Crystals, which gives the Phoenix's plus two range. It's a fantastic upgrade when you're playing against Mass Muta. It just already feels a little bit late. Like when you have like one Phoenix for every like eight Mutas. <laughs> okay, maybe a little, a little less extreme than that, but it's just not a great situation to be in. Even though, yeah, you can see that these guys are doing a fantastic job kiting against the Muta army. At the same time, though, while this is going on, we do have the Protals now moving across with their ground force. Zerk army now knocking at the natural as well, so rather than defending at home, Dark is going for a full-on counterattack. Keep in mind that Protals can always recall if they really want to, but at this point, I don't think that that is what we're going to see. Instead, what we have is a full-on base race. So I think it bears repeating. The win condition in a game of StarCraft 2 is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. We are now getting to a point where both players are rushing to kill, well, everybody's structures. At this point, though, the Mutas have come back home. There's only one Archon in the mix right here. If he can snipe that Archon, life is going to be A-OK. -okay. He's just uh, trying to magic box to the best of his abilities. Queens right now trying their best as well to stay alive. Uh, that Archon is doing a lot of work. Yeah, one Archon already fell. You got to be careful. The splash damage from that glowy boy over here is amazing. That's really the only thing that's amazing, though, in this Protoss army. Yeah, at this point, there's just not enough Stalkers available to shoot down all of the Mutas. The Phoenixes have, for the most part, been dealt with as well, and that means it's Dark who obtains the victory in this best-of-five series, 3-0.